What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be learning about actors in Swift, a relatively newer concept. We'll take a brief first look and an overview in a playground. So drop a like down below, open up Xcode, and let's create a playground and start talking about actors. So I'm going to create a blank playground here. We're going to creatively call this actors because we're super creative on this channel. Let me go ahead and save it and we'll close up this left panel and I'll bump up the font size here as well. Let me make my window a tad bit bigger. So actors were introduced alongside the new paradigms for concurrency in Swift. So things like async await. And I want to demonstrate the power of actors through a practical example. Now, one disclaimer that actors and async tasks don't always play nice in playgrounds. So we're going to talk through a lot of the code as we write it. So let's create a class called user storage. And you can imagine this class has a dictionary called a store. And we're going to basically store a ID of a user and some type of user object, which we haven't created yet, but we're going to create it up here momentarily. Now, inside of this user storage class, we basically want two functions. One function is going to get a user for us if one exists for a given ID. So that's pretty simple. We'll just return the user uh, in the store with that ID. And of course, otherwise it'll be nil if it doesn't exist. Or we're going to save a user into our uh, store for their ID, which is pretty simple. We're going to say our store is going to be a user dot ID is going to equal user. Now this is going to yell at me because this should be user optional and we need to uh, fill out the user class up here. So we're going to say there is a ID on here, which is a string. We'll just add a name as well. And we're going to give this guy a initializer because we need to be able to create it. And then we'll jump right into the thing that actors solve for us. So self ID is ID and self name is name. I believe we should be good to go. Our, all of our errors should disappear. Awesome. Okay. So a huge problem in writing a lot of code, especially as apps get more and more complicated, is asynchronous and synchronous work. Now what I mean by this is let's say you have multiple calls in your app to get users, let's say from a API call or from the database, and you want to make sure that you know, you're know you not blocking the main queue, your UI, to save and get these users. So imagine you introduce a queue into this. So let's say we're going to say private let queue. And this is going to be some background work that we do. And we're going to call this user save queue. Now let's say we go ahead and uh, in terms of saving, we're going to say go ahead and save into our uh, queue asynchronously. So we're going to say self.store. Uh, go ahead and store a user at this user ID uh, on our queue asynchronously so we can do things in parallel. Now, a huge issue arises, if you can imagine, let's say we first store user A, B, then C, but in parallel we also said we want to get user C before C was stored. So the simple way to fix that would basically be to make all of these calls synchronous. So we're going to say, you know, q.sync here and here we're also going to say q.sync because we want to make sure that we are synchronously uh, doing this work if we aren't we might run into what we call race conditions now when you start getting into more complex scenarios like this where some work needs to be done in order to avoid these weird concurrency conditions you might want to start thinking about using an actor now let's see what actors can do for us so I'm going to undo all this queue nonsense because it gets kind of complex, as I'm sure a lot of you know, with larger applications. So we're going to get rid of that, and I'm going to call this an actor of user storage. Now, this basically will synchronize our method calls inside this actor uh, by default. So what that means is what we just got by virtue of using a queue and saying queue.sync, we'll also get that by just calling this an actor, and the actor will synchronize for us. Now, one big distinction before we actually use the actor that I want to draw your attention to is how it's actually called. So let's say we create storage, and this is going to be user storage, just like that. We should probably create a constructor on this. 
And let's say we go ahead and create a user. So we'll say user is going to be uh, a user with a ID. We'll say one, two, three. We'll toss a name in there. And of course, we're going to store this user. So we'll say storage.save for user. And we're going to get a uh, user back by saying storage.get for the ID one, two, three. And finally, I'm going to print out a string describing what we have gotten back. And if we open up the console and give this a run, of course, we're going to get the expected user back, assuming I don't have a silly typo somewhere. Now, the fact that all of this is a simple class, uh, the call site will look like this, right? Like there's no, there's no asynchronous work going on here. Um, there's nothing fancy particularly that we are doing. Now, while my playground decides to be super slow, we're just gonna pause this because it's kind of common sense at this point. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna change this to be an actor. Now, when you introduce this as an actor, the thing that changes are all of these errors. What it's basically getting at here is that because the actor needs to synchronize these calls, in other words, you know, you need to have them uh, queued up, they need to be a part of a task. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna toss these inside of a task. So let's say we create a task and we do this like this. So we first wanna create a user, then we're gonna say, okay, go ahead and save this user. Then we wanna get the user. Now the important thing to note here is it's still yelling at us. So why is it yelling at us? And the reason it's yelling at us is that we need to await for these operations to finish before we can actually proceed. And that's why the notion of actors and synchronization is so critical. And this concept of async await makes this honestly uh, pretty, pretty easy to work with. So the key takeaway here is you want to avoid race conditions and various concurrent operation issues and headaches when you get into larger applications. Uh, it honestly benefits uh, simple applications too, but it's easier to demonstrate the issue that it solves with larger apps. So if you think about something like Instagram, whether let's say they have a cache of getting your photos in your feed, but then they also need to hit some other API to go ahead and fetch the like count. Let's say it's not a part of the same model. They might want to do that as soon as a photo is in some type of cache, right? Let's say they have a LRU cache, which is the least recently used or most recently seen photo cache. They might want to use actors, right? When a single photo is available, you can go ahead and get it and dispatch another check to go and get the like account for it. Now, this is not to be confused with things like dispatch groups. Uh, synchronization is a pretty uh, broad topic with a lot of use cases and scenarios that I intend to do videos on, but I at least wanted to do a very quick primer for actors since I think it's a newer thing that a lot of people aren't using. It's a little scary when you first see it because it's a new keyword and it's, you know, a lot of people don't know what it is. Uh, and a lot of projects are also legacy. And when you start working in legacy projects and code, you don't necessarily want to jump to the newest thing because you might break everything. And I'm sure we've all seen a thousand Xcode errors when we touched one thing and we hit Command Z undo super quick. So, uh, you know, actors are not the worst thing in the world. You guys should definitely take a look. And that is all I've got for you guys today. Super brief video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down below. Let me know in the comments if you're using actors or async await. And if you are, uh, what you would like to see on the channel. I've got a bunch of videos for a combined using async await and Swift UI, async sequence, and a whole lot more planned coming soon. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.